I'm on the most overpowered build on NBA 2K20. I feel like it's probably the most popular point guard build now. You see it everywhere. And honestly, one of the least skillful point guard builds in the game. And it is the two-way slashing playmaker. Probably the best all-around build in NBA 2K20. I'll have some really good gameplay. Show you guys what the two-way slashing playmaker can do. Show you my badges, my attributes, everything. And talk about the two-way slash and playmaker and why I think I'm done using him. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, leave a like, and let's get right into the video. Alright YouTube, it's Quill, and I'm coming back at you with the new video, and you see I'm on the two-way slash and playmaker. I want to show you guys my attributes, my badges, so let's get right into that. So these are my attributes at 99.9. I'm sure you guys know how to make this build. If you don't, then I'll leave a link in the description to my build and jump shot that I use on this. But you guys see right away on the physicals on the bottom, 99 on four out of the five categories. And trust me, that 99 vertical does make a really big difference. You guys will see me get a couple of crazy rebounds in this video. But I just want to point out a few things to you guys. And that's number one, a 92 driving dunk. Literally a higher driving dunk than my offensive threat, which has Hall of Fame driving badges. A 72 three-pointer, which means you can hit consistently pretty much every time if you got your jump shot on. A 90 ball control with 99 speed, 99 speed with ball, so you are just as fast as you could possibly be. And then what makes this build the best, four out of five defensive categories, you have over a 90 rating. Now I'm only gonna leave this up for a few more seconds, so if you do wanna, you know, keep this screenshot or pause the video, but you saw those ratings. The two-way slash and playmaker is the best all around build in the game. Now for my badges real quick, I'll go through them. I know I've showed them a lot, so you guys know these are the core finishing badges. What makes this build really good is look at 11, 10, 20, 20. What other build you know is getting at least double digits in every single category? So you see you get the 11 finishing, 10 shooting, which is more than enough with a 72 three pointer. 20 playmaking badges so you can afford to put on hall of fame bailout hall of fame dimer you can get all the best playmaking badges and then once again what makes this build the best hall of fame defensive badges and you get 20 badge points so now let me get into some gameplay on this build if you do want to know my animations my jump shot all that go to my best dribble moves video best jump shot all that's out but let's show you some gameplay and just explain why this is the most overpowered build in the game and why i think i'm going to stop using him so here's the gameplay. You can see I'm on my two-way slash and playmaker running with MJ on a shooting glass lock. And now is when I'm going to start just talking about the build, talking about why I think it's probably the most overpowered build in the game, why I'm going to stop using him. And I want you guys to, you know, join this little discussion. So comment down below. I want you guys to comment what you think about what I'm saying. If you think it's facts, if you think anything is wrong but i hope you guys saw that rebound i'm gonna show you it again but this is what i'm talking about the 99 vert okay you guys saw all the uh all the stats on it 99 vertical you see just look at this rebound literally getting animations that i haven't even seen glass cleaners get and that is because of the 99 vertical and then i do have my a 91 defensive rebound too but enough about that, let's talk about the build. By the way, you guys will see me shoot really, really bad these first two shots, but don't worry, it will get better. So the two-way slash and playmaker, Quill, why don't you like it? Why aren't you gonna use it? Why do you think it's too overpowered? For one, the behind the back are taking out the game. I know you guys don't wanna hear it, but once that behind the back are taking out the game, now it was already one of the best builds with the behind the back in the game. But then once they took it out and you see how fast, you know, the Steph Curry move is, with this build, there's just no beating it. The only uh, the only offensive build that could compete with this build was the offensive threat, you know, my 6'3 offensive threat that I have, and then a playmaking shot creator, the playmaking and uh, shooting pie chart. But those two builds relied heavily on the behind the back. And the thing is, those builds, it's still hard to play defense when you don't have the behind the back in the game on those builds. Like, as you see, I just I put him on the ground. But you guys will know, if I'm on my offensive threat and you ever pull up on me, you have a good chance of dropping me off. Now, I feel like I have good defense, you know, honestly, but it's still hard to play defense on a 6'3 player with only 6 defensive badge points. Meanwhile, you guys see how overpowered the offense is on this build. I haven't even talked about the defense. You have 99 speed with, I think, like a 92 lateral quickness, 91 perimeter defense, 6'5", so you're bumping everything with 20 
defensive badges and their Hall of Fame. Like, when you give the ball up on this build, you play such good defense, or the build plays such good defense, it's so easy to play defense with it, that you're gonna get the ball back a lot. Meanwhile, the offensive threat, playmaker, shot creator, if you give the ball up on the twos, it's gonna be tough to get the ball back. You have to rely on just straight up good defense by you or the other team sell. Meanwhile, the two-way slash and playmaker, I feel like is so easy on defense. But I wanna focus on offense in this video. You guys, I'm not gonna put that many defensive clips. I wanna focus on offense. And I said it in the beginning of the video, this build has a higher driving dunk than my offensive threat, which gets Hall of Fame slashing badges. This build gets a 92 driving dunk. So when you combine being six foot five with regular or bigger, you know, arm length, which is what you should have done, then you have a 92 driving dunk with 99 speed with ball. You don't even need to be a good shooter on this build. This is why I say this build really takes no skill. Because if I'm ever on my offensive threat and somebody pulls up on this build, they can literally beat me without shooting the ball one time and with me knowing they're going to do it. Whether it's post hooks, post moves, which is really, really glitchy if you guys don't know about. I really don't want to show you guys all that because that will just break the game. But mainly what all these guards do is just hop steps. Hop steps, like they take no skill, right? We all know hop steps with two-way slash and playmakers is what makes the build so broken. Now they're good with my offensive threat. I know hop steps are really, really good with the offensive threat. But on a two-way slash and playmaker, six foot five, I don't know what it is. You get faster dunks, you get more dunks, you dunk from further, and then once again, you give the ball up. Like, look at what I'm hitting off of an ankle breaker every single time. I didn't even get into the Hall of Fame playmaking badges. You get Hall of Fame Dimer for your teammates, Hall of Fame Floor General, Hall of Fame Bailout, so you'll never, ever, your teammates will never, like, look at what I'm passing out of. Now, even though he misses it, once again, there comes my vertical, getting the rebound. Obviously, Hall of Fame Handles for Days, Hall of Fame Quick First Step, so you're just faster. Like, trust me, I noticed the difference when I'm on my offensive threat, which is, once again, two inches shorter than this build, it's, it feels way slower. You guys see the dunks that I get? It doesn't matter that you don't have Hall of Fame Contact Finisher, because when you have all the fastest dunk packages on, like I do on this build, you take off from so far away. Like, look at the dunks that I get. Well, I mean, right there, you see I dot MJ. Now, I didn't have Hall of Fame Dimer on in this video. I only had Hall of Fame Floor General on. Regardless, he's not going to miss that a lot of the time. Well, I mean, it is MJ, so he might. But now you guys know why the build's overpowered. I mean, you probably already knew before clicking on this video for how many people you see actually use this build, but yeah. I don't really have fun on it anymore. The reason I don't really want to play on it anymore is just I'm not I don't have fun on it. When I've been using my offensive threat lately and my playmaking shot creator, especially with that new Pro 6 size up that I put on, I was having a lot more fun on those builds than this build. You see, it's it's so easy to score on this build. Literally just do a hezzy into curry, and then most of the defenders, you see this guy that's playing me right now is probably six foot three, maybe six foot four. I can dunk hop step him every single play, it doesn't matter. I can pass out of every single hop step I go up with, that's what makes Hall of Fame bailout so good. I can just do a hop step, I see he helps, and if I don't want to go up, just tap A, and every single time, it will get completed no matter what. So that's why I'm not going to use this build anymore, even when I'm struggling to shoot, it's still so easy to score or get stops because once again the Hall of Fame defensive badges, so you'll be seeing me on my playmaking shot creator and my offensive threat probably from now on. I was planning to drop a best jump shot video, but I don't I don't use a new jump shot. You guys know the jump shots that I use. So if you do wanna know the jump shot I have on right now, go in the description, you'll see my build, the jump shot, everything you wanna know. Showed you guys, if you're wondering the dribble moves that I'm doing, I showed you guys that best dribble moves video in my last one. The dribble moves on both my offensive threat and the two-way slash and playmaker. But I hope you guys, you know, really understand why I don't want to use this build anymore. I actually get a lot of comments of people telling me, bring back the two-way slash and playmaker. And I haven't used him in or uploaded him in like three weeks. And that's just because I haven't been using him. I haven't been having fun on him like I have my offensive threat or my playmaking shot creator. So if you watched it this far, then do me a favor, not only leave a like on the video, but comment down below. Let me know what you think of this discussion. I know every year that there's, you know, a dominant point guard build, but I don't know, the two-way session playmakers are just different. I don't really care about, you know, being the best or having the, you know, playing on the most overpowered build. Because I win, obviously, on my offensive threat, but I care about having fun, and that's just not what I'm having on this build. 
So comment down below what you think. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like, sub if you're new, and I'm out.